today we're going to look at more ways on how to install AmiBerry on your Raspberry Pi. So we're going to look at Twister OS first and we can install AmiBerry via PyKiss. Twister OS comes in a range of themes so you've got the Windows 10 theme, a Mac theme, a Windows 7 theme and because we like old school, a Windows 95 theme. I'll carry on using this one for the rest of the video. So PyKiss can be loaded up by going to System and then PyKiss. Now PyKiss allows you to install a load of applications. The first time you load it up, it'll probably do an update similar to this. So don't worry, just click Enter to uh, exit that and then load it up again. So once it finally loads, you'll find a nice menu like this. Uh, what we're going to be interested in is under Emulation. And then you can see at the top, we've got AmiBerry. There are loads of other emulators that you can play around with as well, not just the Amiga. So pressing Enter, and then Enter again, will start the installation process. You'll notice as well, it downloads a copy of Tolkien, and as well, it downloads some Kickstart ROMs. I'm not sure on the legality of this, but hey, it installs them. And that's it installed. So if you go to games and then AmiBerry, it should load up. Now I noticed that it didn't load up the first time. And this is because I was in 720p resolution for doing this video, but changing it to 1080p resolution, it loads up just fine. And here's Toacon loaded up. Now, what if you just want your Raspberry Pi just to be an Amiga and you want it as slim line as possible? Well, Diet Pi is your option. And on Diet Pi, when you go to the Raspberry Pi, as you can see, there's an AmiBerry image that you can download. It takes you to the AmiBerry website for some more information. But once you downloaded this image, uh, and then burnt it to a SD card. When you boot up Diet Pi for the first time, make sure that you've got an Ethernet cable connected because it downloads a lot of packages and that's one of the requirements when you install Diet Pi. But after a load of text and a load of installation, eventually you'll get to AmiBerry. And if you set up your Amiga exactly how you want it with a hard drive, for example, and call the configuration default, it will boot straight into this and it will be a seamless experience. So that's pretty much it for this video. There is Amoebian that does a similar thing to Diet Pi, but on looking at it, it looks like the project hasn't been updated in quite a while. So that's why I'm not really recommending it in this video. In the next video about the Raspberry Pi, I'm actually going to be looking at FSUAE uh, from a comment that was left on one of my previous videos and we're going to look into how to install the latest version on the Raspberry Pi so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you wish to see more and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.